waterfalls, lakes, mountains. Welcome to Wales. But did you know they also have gardens? Join us while we give you a taste of the first ever festival of gardens in North Wales. Welcome to Chirk Castle, the gateway to beautiful Wales. It was built in the 1300s originally for Edward I to quell the Welsh Rebellion. Today, in 2016, we are here to discover the gorgeous gardens. These beautiful yew trees are 100 years old and are regularly clipped into gorgeous shapes like this traditional Welsh hat. Gardens are split into two, the formal geometric terraces and if you walk this way is a colourful secret garden. It's a beautiful spring day and I'm surrounded by a sea of blossoms. From beautiful pink cherry blossoms to white magnolias, this garden is so cleverly designed that you will see something in bloom all the way until October. You can enjoy the views of the castle from all four sides, but from this angle you get the best view of the former gardens. As you can see the views are fantastic, they're Victorian and it takes us about eight to ten weeks to clip them all and we get about three and a half tons of clippings which all goes to cancer research. This is an osmanthus, osmanthus but woody eye which comes all the way from China and in spring it has these white flowers which although they're small are really really fragrant. This is just one of a lot of plants which are found right up against the castle walls and I think one of the keys to this garden is diversity. There are plants here literally from every continent. Behind me is the iconic Plastanaborg at the foothills of the beautiful Welsh mountains. People come here to visit the gardens and the house and also there's loads of fun courses you can do here. So the garden is littered with beautiful rhododendrons such as the one I'm standing inside. This is almost 200 years old. Behind me you can see the terraces of Plastanaborg and this big wall which is full of buttresses holding the terrace up to make sure it doesn't come falling down this slope. It's south facing and beneath the terrace there are some wonderful plants from all around the world which just bathe in the sunshine which pitches in to each part of the buttress. In there there are magnolias from the Himalayas, there are Drimis, which have come from South America, there are Osmanthus, which come from China, and there are Hibiscus, which come from the Mediterranean region. One of the beautiful things about this terrace is on the one hand you have the rhododendron, and on the other you have the magnolia. Just enjoying a delightful afternoon tea before wandering around the gardens of Plas Brondanu. Blue and gold, interesting colour combination. There's more blue and gold. The valley behind me was once sea, coastline. Until the embankment was built, about five miles away, the sea came right up into this valley. And that's the reason why we see these colours here, the blue and the gold, because Clough Williams Ellis, the architect and the creator of this garden, decided that the blue represented the sea and the yellow or the gold represented the sand on the beaches alongside the sea. Camellias, hydrangeas, roses, colour all year round. Throughout the garden the hedges are broken up so you can get a wonderful view of the vistas behind me. Now I don't know if you like drinking tea but if you do you've actually been ingesting the leaves of this plant behind me. This evergreen with white flowers on it is a camellia. It's Camellia sinensis, which comes from Japan and China. But in fact, this is the tree which gives you tea. Gardens, and we've stopped off at the Osprey Centre. And I'm standing here with David, who's going to tell us a little bit more. We've got cameras on the nest, which is about a mile and a quarter from where we are now. This is the male, who only arrived about two days ago. And he's just eating a fish he's, he's just brought in. Um, and this is the female. Uh, and he bought um, a fish for her about two hours ago. Oh. So she's pretty happy about that. We've just stumbled across an Italian village in the middle of North Wales. How amazing is that? It's called Port Merriam and I'm standing at the highest point eating the most delicious gelato ever. 
come out into this wonderful garden beyond the village. The village is beautiful, it's got some wonderful Italian architecture, but out here in the garden there are lakes, Japanese style bridges like the one I'm standing on, and plants which have been introduced to this garden literally from all around the world. Spring and early summer are probably the best times to come and see the garden here at Port Merrin, and it's at that time of year when all the rhododendrons come into flower, like this beautiful pink Himalayan rhododendron in front of me. Go for it, yeah. We're en route to a garden called Flaus Cadnant in Anglesey and we've stumbled across this beautiful castle. It's the second biggest in Wales and it's where all the princes of Wales are crowned. We live behind the blustery winds of the castle and reach our destination, Flaus Cadnant. Behind me are two structures which lead into a lovely wall garden from where you can see the gorgeous view of the mountains. Almost looks a little bit like we're in Switzerland. Behind me you've got Swiss looking mountains and now you've got conifers looking like Toberones. Delicious! This garden's full of surprises. You just never know what's around the corner. We've seen buttresses made of slate and stone and here you've got buttresses made out of hedges. Um, they're quite interesting. They divide the garden into different sections and each different section has a different colour. When you come to Plas Cadnan, you could be forgiven for thinking that the garden was just within the walls. But in fact, if you go through this secret tunnel behind me, suddenly a whole new garden opens up, a woodland garden which is really magical. And you come out of this secret passage and suddenly you find all these beautiful flowers, like these delightful pink azaleas that are here. Feels like we've traveled from the mountains of Switzerland to the waterfalls of Thailand. Behind me is this beautiful water piece hidden at the base of the secret garden. No visit to North Wales would be complete without popping up to the top of a mountain. And these ones are a whopping 3,000 feet high. If it's not the giant magnolia that sweeps you off your feet, it's going to be the sea of colours that greet you here in Bodnack Gardens, one of the biggest gardens in Wales. On the one hand, you have this beautiful country mansion, and on the other, a magnificent glade of magnolias, which flower from March to May. I'm sitting on a bench surrounded by wisteria, which is over 100 years old. It's one of five terraces which all face the mountains. Quite spectacular. When you visit Bodmin, you must make sure that you come to see this tree. This is a Grecian strawberry tree and it's over 100 years old. It was planted in 1905 and although it's completely hollow in the middle, it's still alive. And in autumn time, it has red strawberry-like fruits which are edible. Is that the view? Just beautiful! Welcome to Powys Castle. Built in the 13th century, the formal gardens were added later in the 17th century. These stunning yew trees are crowning the niches behind me, uh, which originally housed Italian-style statues. When you visit Powys Castle, you must make sure that you come down onto the terraces, because each terrace has a secret. In the first one, there's an old fernery, with lots of ferns from all around the world. And then you drop down to the next terrace, where you'll find a conservatory or an orangery, which would at one time had lemons and other citrus fruits within it. But probably the most dramatic feature of the terraces are the big old yew trees. They were planted in 1680, so they're three, almost 340 years old. Originally, they would have been very formal in design. They would have been clipped to a pyramid shape. But more recently, they've been allowed to grow, as they would in the wild, more freely. And so they've created these wonderful shapes you can see above me. Most people, when they come to Powys, tend to stay around the castle. But if you're prepared to walk just for 10 minutes, you can get to the other side of the valley where this wonderful view of the castle opens up. As well as formal gardens, there's so many other beautiful landscapes to discover here, including this one, which was a present to Mrs. Oakley from her husband. Isn't she a lucky lady? This is just a small snippet of what you can see in North Wales. So come and enjoy the festival gardens for yourself. Have you heard of triffids? Yes. Well, they're a bit like that. You, actually, the one behind you is moving now. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> <laughs> 